Hey everybody, there are some really cool and interesting people working at Autodesk. So, I thought I would try something new. Today, you're gonna meet Jamie Shear. Now, Jamie is part of a team that creates all the learning content you can find if you go to Fusion 360 and you go up and click on the Support and Learning tab. If I should describe Jamie, I think I would describe him as one of these guys that uh, every guy kind of like wish they had as a friend. So, with no further ado, it's Jamie Shear. Jamie, welcome to the show. Hey Lars, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So I'm gonna jump right into it here. So you are in charge of the team who are developing all the learning content that is up on uh, the Fusion 360 site, all this wonderful official content. Can you uh, give a little bit of background about how you guys decided to develop this, how you came about that? Yeah, so, you know, I'll say I, I, have, I have just part of, of the team who's, who's focused on building learning, learning experiences. More specifically, um, my team focuses on new customer success uh, and adoption. And really, you know, what, we've, what we tried to do in building a lot of the a lot of the learning and the courses that you'll see in the Getting Started portal um, is simply just connect connect experts coming from industry inside of Autodesk with you know years and years, probably a combined 150 years of experience um, to new customers, and we wanted to do that in in a in a different way, right? Our goal is not specifically to teach. Um, new customers all of the buttons in Fusion, we wanted to focus on what are the things that you need to know, and more importantly, um, how do you get through a workflow that's relevant to you as a new Fusion subscriber based on why you subscribe to Fusion? It, the content that I'm creating on YouTube is very like picking things out and, and kind of like very topic uh, based. So. What is the difference, the main difference on the way you structured it on the Fusion side? Yeah, so the, the goal with the, the content that's in the Getting Started portal, again, is, is first to give a new user the ability to, you know, kind of go down a path that's, that's relevant to why they use Fusion. So, you know, similar to probably a lot of the customers you're working with, Lars, if you subscribe to Fusion 360 to you know, send G code to your CNC machine. We want to give you a tailored path to quickly kind of expedite your experience in doing that. Super important that, you know, we have the right materials and that certainly through the, the help and all of the learning pages inside of, you know, the Autodesk Knowledge Network, you'll learn every button that you need inside of Fusion. But more specifically, if your first goal is to, you know, run a nonlinear simulation or send G code to, um, you know, to your POS VF2, we want to help you do that and, and get that, um, get that first experience and that first win using Fusion 360. Cool. So quick question. You are kind of like one of the learning experts. Uh, one of some of the bad advice you hear out there uh, to people who is trying to learn CAD. <laughs> So, you know, I know one of the things, and I can say I've struggled with in the past as well, um, as, as a user, you know, I think everyone, we always gravitate towards wanting to solve or learn or do the hardest problem we can think of, right? Um, and it's in our nature, right? Probably as engineers and designers, as machinists, you want to go start off by trying to machine the hardest part that you've ever machined in the tool that you've been using for 30 years, right? Or you want to go design, um, you know, a, a, a Ferrari um, inside of Fusion, which is not a bad thing, but it's also, it's a, it's a challenging place to start, right? Because um, certainly uh, there's, there's a ton of, um, there's a ton of ways that, that Fusion is familiar and very similar to um, tools that are in the industry. Um, and there's some fundamental ways that uh, Fusion has been reimagined, right, to be a different um, experience. And I think that, um, you know, maybe jumping all the way into the deep end of the pool, while it's always, you know, admittedly for me too, it's the first thing that I want to do. 
um, it's, it's also a challenge, right, to skip over kind of some of the fundamental learnings that um, are important to have a, a good base to start on. It's true. It's easy to, uh, to look at something very complicated and say, ooh, that's what I want to learn how to do. Um, yeah, that if you're brand new, that might not be, uh, be the best place to just jump in and do, do the hardest part. Sure. I mean, it, sometimes it just takes a little bit of fundamental knowledge and then jump in and, uh, and, and get through what sometimes can be, you know, an initial challenge or a struggle. But that's also where you learn um, and, and start to develop that really deep understanding, not only of how to get your job done, um, but how fusion lives and breathes, right? How it's um, how it wants to perform, how you need to um, use it as that, that tool for your product development process. So one of the things that we talk quite a bit about is that Fusion is kind of like the new kid on the block, right? Like four or five years old versus, you know, Inventor and other uh, cat products that is, that is a lot older. So uh, stalking you a little bit on LinkedIn, um, you have some interesting past experience before you, you came uh, to Autodesk. How long have you been with Autodesk? So I, I, it'll be eight years um, coming up here in the summer. Um, and, you know, I've, I've spent uh, the majority of my time, you know, focusing on our manufacturing solutions. But, you know, prior to um, about two and a half years ago, when, when I started focusing on customer success for Fusion, um, I supported and worked on, um, you know, the, the teams for the rest of our manufacturing tools, like Inventor and Vault. Um, and our collections and, and things like that. You, you have a pretty deep background, not just in Fusion, but actually into a, a lot deeper into also Inventor and, and Vault and other, other products. So before you came to Autodesk, you also worked at Viking Yard Company. Tell us a little bit about that. Like, how was that? Takeaways? Yeah, so, um, you know, so coming out of, uh, coming out of college, I'm an industrial designer by education. I spent, I spent a number of years working um, for the Viking Yacht Company. It's located in, in New Jersey, not far from, from where I'm from. And, um, you know, being able to, to kind of live and breathe in, um, you know, not only a, a world-class manufacturer, um, you know, in their industry, but also, um, you know, being able to be a part of uh, everything from initial, you know, kind of um, specifications and design through manufacturing um, in, in one form of another um, was just an incredible experience and um, frankly you know one of the reasons why I, I have the the honor of working for Autodesk today so you know a lot of my a lot of my experience my responsibilities there um, you know span you know kind of uh, traditional design or you know kind of CAD operations and um, the majority of my time, actually, I transitioned into a role where you know, I was helping the company transition to use Inventor as, um, you know, as a design and engineering tool um, and also was uh, responsible for bringing Vault Professional in to manage all of the data uh, that we were creating as well as other tools like Alias to support um, you know, the initial kind of upfront design processes. So, you know, everything from being able to, you know, kind of uh, being able to work with, you know, every different systems engineer, um, working with the teams in design, to also seeing my designs uh, machined in a 60 by 30 foot five axis router um, down on the floor was, uh, was an incredible uh, first experience into, into the manufacturing space. Yeah, I mean, like I've had a couple of experience to be uh, at a couple of companies where they're making just visiting uh, where they're making shipbuilding. And it's it's absolutely fascinating. It is. It, it's amazing uh, it, when you see, you know, uh, when you see an 80 to 90 foot yacht come together and uh, knowing all of the, you know, all of the people that are involved, all of the effort in uh, in, in bringing that customer experience. It's uh, it's it's truly amazing. Last question. If you uh, could get a billboard anywhere, what, uh, what would it say? Wow. Um, this, is, uh, this is a lot of pressure, um, Lars. I think, I think some of our colleagues on the marketing team would want me to make it say something about Fusion 360. <laughs> um, but uh, but I'll, I'll pass on that. You know, um, I, I'd have to say if, if I could get a billboard anywhere, I want um, 
I want a billboard on the moon that uh, that tells everyone to look up, right? And I think it just I, I happen to just have a a passion for 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 the stars and for outer space, and I just want everyone, you know, figuratively to always kind of be looking up, looking towards. Uh, looking towards those big goals like like the moon. So that's what I want. I want a billboard on the moon. I absolutely love that. That's a great, great answer. And in the bottom, it has the URL for all of the great learning content <laughs> that, uh, that the team has created for Future 60. <laughs> Perfect. Hey, Jamie, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day. Thanks for having me, buddy. Thank you, man. Take care. So I hope you like this. You let me know in the comments area and with a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Definitely, um, this was a lot of fun and I'll be interested in doing, uh, doing more. So go and check out that cool learning content that Jamie and his team have done. And uh, maybe uh, we'll do some more of these in the future. Take care, everyone, and have an awesome, awesome day.